them. Well, good afternoon, and that weather looks beautiful there today. Hey, Malcolm, welcome to North Carolina. Yeah. Our reception and technical difficulties, we moved outside. It's a little better out here. How's your week been? Yeah, it's been great. It's, good. It's, yeah, ups and downs like everything, you know, uh, but um, the, the dynamics of, um, you know, adjusting to, to modern living, you know, it keeps changing. But all, all's good, all positive, all going in the right direction. Great. Well, I'm excited about our show again. It's been a week. Wow. Yeah, and wow, wasn't that flown by quickly? And uh, um, I spoke briefly uh, to Heather from last week's call, and she said, you know, send her regards and um, the, the reaction to her posting and uh, people have been reaching out to her want to know more so and this is the desired effect that we want you know we know a great group of people and um, they all have a story um, they're all on a journey uh, they all got something to share as, as we always want to share and if we can help them get their message out you know, they in turn help us get our message out. We connect with people that are looking for something. Yes. And it, it, it just all fits so nicely. So um, tell me what we're doing today. Well, it's amazing. You know, you mentioned community well, just this morning with um, our guest today, Desiree. You know, you mentioned something you're going through. And in an instant, you have something texted that some type of resource or something. It's just amazing to community we become family and it's just we learn from each other and the puzzle pieces go together and you know we're all a part of a story we've impacted one another and our journey begins together it's just like a, you get to be a part of someone else's journey but they get to be a part of your journey so it's just really amazing so I want to introduce Desiree today she's in Louisiana Mer Mer Medrin, that's how you say it and she has some things she's been through um, with her family and she wants to share today so let's welcome her Okay, let me uh, get the technological stuff going right here and, uh, and bring her in. Here we go. Hopefully all this will run smoothly. Yep, looks, looks pretty good. There she hey. is. Hey, Desiree. Welcome hey, everyone. Yay. Welcome. Hey, Desiree. <laughs> okay, nice to see you. All right, Desiree today. She's um, got a medical background. She's worked as a nurse for six years in oncology and a step down from ICU. She has some business partnerships with a water machine, uh, I mean a water business with CBD and she has been a wonderful wife and mother and amazing friend to me and I'm thankful for your leadership and mentorship. Desiree, welcome to our show. Tell us about your journey. Thank you so much Ravonda and Malcolm for inviting me to the show. I have feel so honored to be here and um y'all have just been a wonderful blessing and gift to me so thank you for being in my life so i'll start my little journey i'm gonna it's kind of going to be i guess you could say a tribute to my parents patty and jerry hampton and it all really began in my childhood my mother and father laid a wonderful groundwork and foundation for my siblings and myself to live an incredible life my mother was a lover of people, of life, fun and thrills, success, and most of all, she loved God. And in that, she preached to everybody who would listen about God. But she was also a wonderful role model, and she really was a living example on how to love and care for herself. She knew how to pamper herself. She knew how to eat nutritiously. She exercised. She took good vitamins. Um, but she also had a lot of joy. She, my mom, somehow, some way, she knew how important and powerful the mind was. And I'd like to give you that little black backstory and why I'm going to talk about this. But first, I want to tell you about how she always loved to do alternative therapies, too. She was either making some sort of poultice for your back or some sort of joint pain, you know, made out of cayenne, pepper, and whoever, whatever, know, whoever knows what else was in there. Yeah. But one of the things that she, I remember very vividly growing up was she had read somewhere, she started using preparation H around her eyes, <laughs> all around her eyes. And it, because it was help, supposed to help reduce wrinkles and fine lines and inflammation. And she started sharing that with all of her friends. And they're like, Patty, get out of here with that. She goes, that's supposed to be used on your bottom, not on your face. No way. <laughs> So that was kind of how I was raised. And uh, but what I want to talk about really is the power of the mind and how important it was 
for my mom to realize early on in her life that it was going to be up to her to make some changes. And so my mother was born in 1942. And you probably wondering, how does this have anything to do with health? And I'm going to lay it out for you. Because we all know that vitamins and exercise and eating nutritiously uh, is very important. But my mother realized that there were four pillars of health. And that was not only physical well-being, spiritual well-being, relationships, but also mental well-being. And if you don't have your mental strength and power and the fortitude to power you through rough times, mm -hmm. game over. Mm -hmm. So I think she was very conscious that she knew that your mind is the master weaver of your life. And uh, she was, so again, she was born in 1942. She, her mother and father had six children. He died early on unexpectedly. She was 18 months old, leaving my grandmother with four children under the age of five. At that time, they did not have things in place like they do today for single moms. They didn't have food stamps. They didn't have rent assistance. They didn't have, uh, oh, what's that other word? Welfare. There was no yeah. welfare. So she was on her own. So what happened was five of those children, including my mother, wound up in an orphanage. And my mother grew up in St. Elizabeth's uh, Orphanage in New Orleans on Napoleon Avenue. And my mother would tell us, so all while we were growing up, you know, we knew that they were poor. But now when I look back, I can really see all the stories that my mother told were filled with love and laughter. And she would have you in stitches, whoever was listening to her stories. And it wasn't until I was probably in my 40s that I realized that all the stories that she told were really were coming from the pain that she suffered, but she didn't see it as pain. So there was pain, there was sorrow, there was abandonment, there was, um, you know, uh, poverty, there was abuse. And she never looked at it like that. It was just her mindset. You know, my mother was able to rise above her conditions and her circumstances. And she made her and my father created a very beautiful life together. And they were very successful. They owned a lot of real estate. And they just did a lot of great things. So the reason that I'm bringing this up is because in this time that we're living in, the COVID era, people are really feeling like they're, they're afraid and you can't live your life in fear. So I wanted to kind of, you know, I'm a John Maxwell certified coach and trainer. And I myself have been through a lot of things that I really would like to say, I wish I had to go through. But apparently you go through things because out of darkness, really does come growth and greatness. And we really have the ability to choose how we want to come out of whatever it is that we're going through. And I can never look at, so although I'm going to give you a brief uh, history of what I went through, we actually, you know, had Hurricane Katrina. We owned a lot of real estate property and apartments, and we thought that that was going to be our retirement. And even though we were properly insured, the insurance company, we had to hire an attorney and we didn't settle until May of 2008. So three years of paying mortgages, taxes, insurance with no income. And my husband had a great business. Well, by the time, and our, my children were in private schools, I was living in my dream home. And by all outside measures, I had it all. And I really thought I did too. And so when the recession came, and my husband's business went to 50% of what it was doing. I was like, oh, oh God. And then we still have all these properties that we're trying to get back up and running. And we just kept holding on. We were holding on for dear life. And we thought we really, in our minds, we thought we were going to make it. And then in 2010, they had the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. And the President Obama made a moratorium where there was no more drilling in the Gulf. Well, my husband's business was all in the oil field and his business just went bah, like flatlined. Well, the first thing you know, we were never able to get back on our feet and there the real estate went, there was our retirement, my car went, boom, my, my, my dream house, gone. And for the first time in my married life, I'm living in a rented house. And I, my thought was, how did I get here? How did this happen? especially to me, I'm a good person. And I think a lot of people kind of feel like that there right, right now when talking with people that they don't understand what's happening. And 
you know, emotionally, it's a lot to take in. And so I really want to help people uh, in the next, starting on September 8th, I would like to invite people in, to join me for a four free week deep dive into this book. I read this when I was in high school, As a Man Thinketh, and it's written by James Allen. And if you're interested, just reach out to me and let me know at desiree.earns at gmail.com. And I really just want to talk about uh, just our mindset and how important it was. Had my mother not had the fortitude to overcome her life, and she would tell stories about the nuns. And uh, one of the things I remember her telling me, she was in high school, so she wasn't in the orphanage anymore, but they were so poor that she had to have the nun actually brought her shopping to buy her first bra. And then they, she only had two pairs of underwear, one on and one off. And when you think about that and you think about the things that my mom and dad created in their life and the real estate, and the, you know, the things that they had, and it wasn't really just about the things. My mother understood how to love on people, to meet people where they are. And so I, I really do believe that in coming to this study, as a man thinketh, we're going to uh, talk about really how, how are we going to come out of this COVID and how can we operate on our seven levels of consciousness, operating at a higher and higher level of awareness. And one thing that I think is really important that Thomas Trower says, he goes, he talks about the personal uh, factor. And the personal factor is you are always bringing you, you to the game. So wherever we are, we're bringing ourselves to the game. And so wherever we are, whatever we're doing, you yourself or the maker of yourself all the time, every second, every minute of every hour, every single day, and you always have been. So to know that we actually have the ability to reach above our conditions and our circumstances, and we can make them the way we want them to be, it could be a new thought for a lot of people. Amen. And so we're always creating, whether we know it or not, by our thoughts and our emotions and the things that we're putting out in the universe. Wow. And like this, so that, I mean, that's kind of some heavy stuff, but it isn't really about, oh, because where I was and where I am, it took a little while. You know, I think, I think, you know, for what you said there, uh, Desiree, this is, this is so powerful. Um, I've not, I've not read the book. I'm not too not too familiar, you know, growing up in a different place and so on, didn't have the, the same reading assignments and so on. But I think that, um, you know, if there was just like three things that people will get out of going through the book with you, what would that be? Well, I really believe that the book is really about taking an inventory of where you are and where you want to go yeah. and how, how to do it. Okay. So Make it I think, right. So Make the decision. It, it, so this, yes. is gonna, this is going to be the map. You are here. You want to get there. These are the steps that you're going to agree on with yourself to to do that. I think that's going to be uh, it's going to be so valuable, so insightful, so powerful, and the timing is perfect. Yeah. And I would like to uh, share this thought. I had heard it. And I just thought, wow, I'm going to remember that. But when we close our eyes, we're actually when we close our eyes. I'm going to do that right this second we're actually going inward and we're looking into ourselves and we're taking inventory of what's going on in here. And then when we open our eyes, our eyes are out here and we're, we're out, we're now out in the world and we're taking everything in from the outside. So insight is inside. Eyesight is outside. And so this is going to be, a really, it's going to be a spiritual journey. It's going to be a discovery and it's going to be insightful and eye opening at the same time. I think it's going to be powerful. I so, um, we'll, when we post this, we'll obviously tag you and stuff and then uh, people will be able to reach out to you. We'll any links you want us to post in, in the post in you know, give them to Ravonda and, uh, We'll take care of that, and I, I think I think that's going to be great. And again, I think the timing is is perfect. You know, I was chuckling when you when you said about your mom making things like poultices. Oh, well, I haven't I haven't heard the word poultice for so <laughs> many years. <laughs> yeah, she really did a lot of. Yeah. She did a little odd, a lot of odd things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, and and there's so much knowledge that's uh, that's. Um, 
you know, that's not being used nowadays. And it was all good at the time. And uh, I can't believe it's not good today. So I think it, I still think it's good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they that's don't it. know it. People don't know it. Okay, so before we let you go, Rhonda, any any closing well, comments? Thanks for sharing that powerful story there, Desiree. It just I've learned a lot just from hearing you share that and just what your mom has instilled into you and what you've learned through everything that you and your family have been in. You have so much to share and give to others. And I know your heart and what you've been a blessing to me. So I know you're going to be able to help a lot of people. And I'm excited. I can't wait for that session to start in September. Until then, we'll probably have you on the show again or hear more from you in the future. Thank you for being on part of our show. Okay. okay. Love y'all. Thank you. Me too. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay, what a powerful story! Wow, and uh, I yeah, there was a there was a lot of emotion coming through there, you know. And it was, you know, you'd never know what people've been through. Yeah, and you know, we're looking in at what was going on down in the Gulf from a distance, and really, you know, not fully understanding the impact of what's going on. So I, I certainly think, you know, I'm I'm, I'm for one going to sign up for this. I want to go through it. I want to. Uh, I want to learn what's out there. I'm, uh, I'm, my mind is a sieve. I'm just like sucking you know, all yeah. sorts of information in. Okay, so uh, it uh, it is the nearly the weekend. You've got some activities lined up because the weather looks beautiful there where you are. The weather's great. We've had two days of storms in the evening, and we've been out and about today and got all of our necessities ready to snuggle in for the weekend, I think. Not, not much yeah. going on here. How about yourself? Yeah, pretty much the same. You know, it's... Uh, um, funny enough that, um, you know, being home, the, the honeydews seem to arrive, you know, we've got, uh, we've got, uh, yeah, stuff to do. All right. We'll look forward to, uh, you know, doing this again next week and we'll get all this, this stuff folded up and we'll get it posted out on Facebook. And, and again, to anyone that's, uh, that's listening out there, please comment. Um, uh, and if you've got some ideas, suggestions of what you want us to do and, uh, um, who knows if you if you want to be part of our community reach out to Ravonda myself and Desiree and last week Heather and uh, this community is going to keep growing so uh, okay. this has been what did we call it again the show me how to show me how okay to. yeah okay. and yeah. this is this is the whole thing you know people have gone through stuff or are going through stuff and they will show you how to so that's right with that I'll leave you on it okay. all right see you next time you have a good bye bye great weekend